Hello, this is Lisa Convoy. I'd like to tell you about a qualitative investigation that I'm doing with the Winbridge Research Center with Mark Bacuzzi and Julie Beischel, a qualitative investigation of the purpose and spirituality of mediums. This is a qualitative study. We're using a scientific method of observation to gather non-numerical data, searching for in-depth understanding of social phenomenon within their natural environment. We focus on the why and the meanings that humans make based on their everyday experiences. So our job here is to better understand what the sample is telling us. And um, while we do use some numbers, um, most of what I'm gonna be showing you is um, what will be statements from the participants. So 128 mediums participated in the study during March to June 2017. They ranged in age from 28 to 74. They were mostly female and mostly white. Uh, these are the two questions that I'm going to um, tell you a little bit more today. The mediums were asked, what is your explanation for why you are a medium? And secondly, in your own words, describe your spirituality as it is related to your mediumship. And all of the uh, responses were written in survey and all participants did not answer all of the questions. So before we get into some of the findings let me tell you a little bit about the analysis. So first we did receive IRB oversight from the Winbridge Research Center. Each team member of the authors listed um, read at least one set of questions for themes. So the two questions we're going to talk about today are why you became a medium and um, uh, spirituality. So each member re read at least one complete set of themes from the 128 um, member sample. And then coding consisted of searching for sought themes and emergent themes in each transcript. So we had some ideas of things that we thought might be there. Those were our sought themes. And then as we, we were reading through the transcripts, uh, consistency started to emerge, trends started to emerge, and those um, are emergence themes. And then we condensed the responses to each topic across the sample for each of the themes. And um, the themes that we decided to look prospectively for became codes. And any disagreement in what became codes or um, what phrases would be coded how were addressed in, in discussion. Um, we then assessed the data for saturation on key content areas and repetition of themes. And lastly, um, We'll be double coding each set of responses at least twice by two of the authors and then double code for themes independently. I say that we did do that once, but there are um, still um, other um, analyses. We want to look a little deeper at some of those codes. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So let's first look at some of the codes for the question, what is your explanation for why you are a medium? And it was interesting, the respondents interpreted this question in, in it seems, one of two ways. Um, some thought that the question was reading as, why did you become a medium? And others thought, what is the purpose for you being a medium? So uh, most people said the response of, why did you become a medium? Most said, I was born this way. Um, one of the um, purpose more common purpose categories was to help others or be a connector. Um, others said uh, the gift is a gift from God. It happened in childhood. It was inherited. Spirit chose me. Spiritual path. I'm not sure why. It just developed. Um, it was a result of trauma. Anyone can do it. And this is who I am. So here's one example to why are you a medium. I was born this way, seeing spirits since I was a child. I thought when I was young, like every medium, everyone was this way. To me, it is more normal than regular people. I don't ever want to be normal. It is a connection to who we really are. This is just a small part of what we are, this human body. Why I'm here is for my own soul expansion, but also to help others with their soul journey. Readings, mediumship, is only one small part of all this. I am a communicator to the other side, as I was told so long ago by my teacher on the other side. A 
Another common type of response is, um, and this is interpreting the question as what is your purpose of being a medium, is to help others or be a connector. She writes, to help others, to bring light and love where there is darkness, to bring hope, to enlighten as many people as I can of the truth. We are all eternal beings of light and love. We can never be destroyed. There are no mistakes, no happenstance. Everything is for a reason. And if you're not sure, just wait. Time will show the truth of everything. And another respondent said, because God gave us all different gifts and I happen to be open to it and embraced it, and I'm here to provide a service to help others. I love what I do. So this is an example of the gift from God category. Another common response that we heard from our sample is that they've always been this way. I've always had some kind of ability from childhood. As I got older, it began to increase. I could sense when things were going to happen. I had visions of things that would come to be in my life. At the age of 49, there was a perfect storm that brought it all to the surface. I was under incredible stress, and I was given a medication that increased my seizures. And I believe that is how I actually became clairaudient versus claircognizant. During that time, I would hear voices that would give accurate information. I started to record it to prove to myself I was not crazy, and the voices could be heard in the recordings too. I believe that everyone has this ability to some degree, but trauma increases it. So you can see in many of these quotes, um, she does tell us that the ability started in childhood, but she also talks about how stress brought it on. That's another code. And um, the importance for her of trauma. So although these are distinct categories, for many of these respondents, um, there is more than one reason that they offer. So here are some responses to the second question. In your own words, describe your spirituality as it is related to your mediumship. Um, you can see from the table there that the um, most common code was um, some sort of higher power. So that's higher power, spirits, or angels, um, followed by energy or love. That is the mediumship taps into energy or love. Um, also frequent was multiple realms of consciousness, um, ascension, spirits, and parallel, but distinctly separate reality of consciousness. And we also have some a non-specific category as well as a combined consciousness category. This is an example of um, what we mean by combined consciousness as a code. I truly sense and believe that we are all one because I can actually feel it. It is just part of me. I feel I'm connected on a deep level to the core of all of us. I cannot understand it fully, but that doesn't bother me. I accept that there is more and that while I'm in this body, I cannot grasp or understand it enough to explain it to others. I feel it. Another common response involved energy or love. I believe that life continues. Energy changes form, but it never lessens or increases. I believe in light love in the universe, whatever we call it. People move on in a new form rather than dying and no longer existing. Here a different respondent speaks about energy or love. We are more energy than physical. I believe we are all one and as individuals are a spark of the Tao that will eventually return. Practicing mediumship allows me to feel connected to people or beings at any level who are not in the physical. It takes my focus off of or out of the physical and into energy. By delivering messages from the disincarnate to the incarnate, it also allows me to feel more connected to this physical. You could say I feel connected spiritually when I am communicating to the non-physical. Here's an example of the impact belief of higher power. I have a strong faith in God and the ability of the universe. I believe that the spirit of a person is able to watch over and communicate with loved ones, that the soul never goes away. Because of my beliefs, I know that there's nothing to fear when it comes to death. Life in one form or another carries on. Here a different respondent speaks about this idea of higher power. While I definitely believe in a supreme being, in archangels, angels, and light beings, I believe everything we are today was previously conceived by ourselves and spiritual guides before we were born, and that we need each other to grow. 
So I don't have a particular religion, but rather I believe in a supreme consciousness that we need to reach in order to reach heaven. Not that heaven that Catholics talk about, but a much greater place. Another common response was an idea of multiple realms of consciousness. I believe in other dimensions. We are all part of it. There is no superior belief system. There is an afterlife for sure. Only because science has not proved it yet does not mean that it did not exist. I communicate with the other side on a daily basis. God is cool with it. Here's another response we coded as multiple realms of consciousness. What my guides have shown me and what I believe in is most similar to Nirvana in the Buddhist religion. Levels of ascension and learning of dark to light based on soul growth with love carrying over each lifetime until you are purely good and at peace with the universe. Universe equals one song and we're all connected. So the last example category is nonspecific and sometimes we coded responses as nonspecific because there wasn't much text there and it was hard to find what the belief um, because once again the qualitative research is looking for a belief what the subject was actually trying to say. Most probably as we continue to um, work with these codes we'll um, begin to understand more about um, what's actually here but for right now nonspecific is um, here are some examples. My spiritual beliefs include being my authentic self and are not attached to any specific religious faith. Or another example from a different respondent, I used to separate my spiritual life from my work, but realized that was still denying in some way who I am. I'm open to mediumship. It is unavoidable. So here are our next steps. Um, we want to finish coding. Um, there are still some codes in development. Um, for example, um, in reading all of these transcripts, it's, it's clear that the mediums are very, there's a pride to what they do. There's a happiness in their practice of their profession. And they really see, many of them report that they see what they do as a, a beneficial service. They're like coaches or um, support for people that are going through a difficult time. And that aspect of the medium as almost um, a health service um, is really interesting. And we're going to dig a little more into that. Um, then complete the double coding. Um, decide what themes to include in the man manuscript, and then write the manuscript and submit for publication. In conclusion, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Winbridge Research Center. Here is my email, and I welcome any comments or suggestions. Thank you very much.